ready. Well, good evening and welcome to our April 30, 2020 business meeting. And I'd ask our county administrator, to please take the roll. Yes. Uh, first, our staff support today is County Council, Stephen Matcor, and Clerk to the Board, Kevin Moss. Roll call, uh, Chair Bernard. Here. Commissioner Fisher. Here. Commissioner Savas. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Commissioner Humberston. Here. And Housing Authority Commissioner Leenstra. She's on mute, but I see her there. And? And Leenstra. Can you unmute her, Kevin, please? Get near. She should be good to go. Uh, yeah. Mr. Leenstra, okay. are you here? Here we go. Very good. You're present. All right. We're, we're good, Commissioner Chair. All right. So please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. So we're holding uh, this meeting virtually. If you've joined us on Zoom app, for this meeting and you are interested in providing public comment, we'll prompt you regarding how to do that when the time is right. You will have the option of providing your comments to us live. Alternatively, anyone can send in a comment to be read during the citizen communication portion of our meeting over email. Just send it in uh, at any time during the meeting by emailing Clacko news at clackmas.us that's t-l-a-c-a-c-o news at clackmas.us be sure to include your name and area where you live next up gary yes commissioners we have a COVID 19 update as usual we'll start with nancy bush director of disaster management and incident commander of the emergency operations center good evening everyone and thank you um, so our few numbers here for today, um, Clackamas County now has 214 positive, which is up nine from yesterday. There are seven deaths. Um, Multnomah County has 707 positives, and that's up from 11 from yesterday, and they have 43 deaths. Washington County has 491, which is up 10 from yesterday, and they have 11 deaths. There are 569 hospitalized um, statewide for, uh, for the uh, COVID. So I was just gonna kind of talk a little bit about some of the numbers and a lot of the things that we've been doing in the Emergency Operations Center this evening. Um, of course, we continue to work in getting our PPE out and working with our communities. Um, but some of the things that has been happening in uh, the week ending April 26, we've had 130 food boxes that were delivered to vulnerable individuals and households. 247 boxes were picked up at the drive up distribution site. We are now uh, doing mobile showers uh, that have been provided for the homeless. And we have fielded 235 calls to the crisis and support line. Since the activation of the EOC, there's been 87 Facebook posts with information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. They have reached more than 234,000 people and nearly, we've had almost 24,000 engagements, which includes comics, uh, you know, share clicks and those types of things. Uh, we have videos that are posted on our social media and they have been viewed, uh, viewed 16,400 times or more. And uh, we, our related web pages have gotten almost 131,000 page views since we stood them up in February, February and we continue uh, to make sure that our web page is up to date and sometimes it's on a daily basis because a lot of uh, the information is changing so quickly. So uh, we also had this week, I think I mentioned earlier in the week, um, we had the uh, GO teams for um, our behavioral health that are now going out. We are now putting together the Spanish GO teams as well, so we can get them out into those communities. And uh, we are providing uh, everything from uh, food to toothpaste to toothpaste, 
um, to you know all of those uh, those basic needs too to a, a great deal of our vulnerable populations that we've been working with, uh, which um, include migrant workers, uh, the houseless, um, and uh, you know those populations that are not able to get those things any longer. So that is, is my report for this evening. If you have any questions, any questions? Uh, Sorry, I was trying to raise my hand and then I just got all confused about how to do that. Let's do this. So, so we, there's been in the news, uh, I think CNN today headline news that there is a potential treatment that the FDA is going to approve that will help people that have COVID-19 and also something that I heard about a vaccine going to human trials. Do you have any um, updates about that? I'm sorry, I do not. I did not see either of those stories yet. I did see the one about treatment yesterday and what I did read uh, from health professionals that they, you know, they're very, very cautiously, uh, they, you know, they don't know for sure if it's going to work and they don't want people to get a, you know, too much hope, but they're definitely trying that. And I have not heard anything about the second issue uh, about vaccine. And then my next question is, we all know that the governor was putting together industry teams to put plans together to reopen. And I know that early next week, we as county commissioners have a call with her to give our input and suggestions. But I'm just curious if, if how we're engaged in, from Clackamas County and what you're hearing along those lines. Yeah, so um, yes, and we actually, um, right before we got on, I was reading an email where the, we, have, we have some of the same calls that are people that are in my position as well as health um, our health care providers and also the health officers and they're staggered out through the week and depending on what county you're in so I know that those phone calls are also going on which is related to reopening and getting some of that guidance out from the governor's office so we're getting that information as well and we are participating in those calls all right uh, Commissioner Schrader and then Commissioner Savas I'm unmuted here. Nancy, I'm curious with the migrant workers, how are you identifying where they are and how are they getting uh, the help they need? Are people driving out to the rural areas? Are you working with the Farm Bureau? What's we the are working, We're working a lot with the faith groups. Um, okay. Yeah, and that seems to be serving us very well. And then we're also working with the media that also serves that population. Okay, and is the majority of this in the rural area or is it spread throughout the county? I'm just kind of curious. If it's a migrant worker, it must be more rural. I would yeah, think, migrant but. worker is more rural, but the um, populations and the liaisons in, that we're uh, working with are actually doing the entire county. So we're okay. going where the population is. Okay. Um, the other thing is, um, what do we know about housing for these workers? Do we, are we addressing anything? Was that so, I know that like, for example, Mount Angel has St. Joseph's Center that they house people, but. Yeah, and we are working on that too. Um, we have funding that is especially around the house list, which of course will include the migrant workers. So they are included in that effort and other populations as well, yes. Okay, yeah, just one comment I wanted to make, Sonia. I think that what you were talking about, the word that I've got because my daughter's in England, evidently, researchers at Oxford are going to be starting volunteer human trials on something they recently discovered. So that seems to be legitimate. It's been uh, in the New York Times, it's been in the Washington Post, it's been on, I think, legitimate media sites. I think the issue is though, once the trials, it's probably still at least a year to year and a half out, even with that. But they seem to have made kind of run the race pretty hard, pretty fast, and um, I'm actually, or at least are at that point. So that's what I know only because my daughter's in England and I, I get updates from them too, so. Well, okay. the report I heard last night was it's possibly January. It could be that soon. They're working so fast that they're going to trials right away. Well, that's <laughs> great. 
as far as that other medicine, I can't remember the name. It's, the name of it, yeah. The treatment uh, seems to be very positive. Uh, so there might be some good news on in the horizon. Okay. So Paul. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the name of that new drug that uh, they're talking about that they're administering with an IV is called remdesivir. Um, that, that's the new stuff. And I, I believe if I'm not, I believe what I heard is that there's actually a few vaccines they're working on, um, more than one, and that there is one, like Jim just kind of alluded to, that's going to be possibly fast-tracked. I'm not sure which of the three or four that they have that they're actually trialing right now. And I don't know if that's in just in this country or in other countries. So um, that's kind of exciting, but we just got to see sure. at what pace they, uh, they actually authorize that. Um, Nancy, I did want to say, um, like I did on Tuesday, I appreciated the graph on the status report with both uh, the state of Oregon and Clackamas. And I just know, I just noticed that shortly after you just limited that to Clackamas County only. Um, I, you know, if, if possible, if it's not too much effort, I really love to see them both. And, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, this morning, uh, early, early this morning, I was uh, following some uh, world news and um, and I'll touch on both, but the one part that came up were how the states in, in U the United States were doing, and and uh, Oregon was was rated as one of the states that had not had seen a decline, and that we were one of the states that were still basically um, not not seeing a reduction, and we're actually seeing climbing numbers. So um, I don't know about other states, but I certainly know that our numbers aren't climbing um, as far as a rate of increase. I know that they're actually, we are adding new cases every day, but at a slower rate than we were two weeks ago. So I, I'd still love to see that and um, uh, include it if that's possible. The other thing that came up is pretty interesting because we heard that Sweden was going to, uh, well, doing what they're doing. They're not going to do social distancing and that people are basically assigned to take personal responsibility well, um, the news as of this morning was that um, they are, they've got, they've seen a spike in deaths from COVID. Um, as of this morning, it was almost 2,500 in Sweden and growing and their neighboring country, Norway, uh, has instituted social distancing similar to the U.S. and what we're doing here in Oregon, and they've only seen 200 deaths. So that's a, that's a striking difference between the two. So I think a lot of people thought that Sweden was going to be a success. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it'll, we'll see. We'll see uh, down the road if it really is or not. But um, I, I would say that for most of this week, um, we've seen uh, the lowest numbers in the last seven days in Clackamas County that we've seen. Um, you know, we did see a, a higher number today for that one individual day, but I'm sure that's really rated on on how testing rolls out and results roll out, not necessarily on on much of anything else. So. Um, just wanted to just add that and um, thank you for all your work. Thank you. It's also uh, the Easter blip is probably why that occurred. The other thing is I, my understanding, I assume this is okay to say, I'll say it anyway, is that in the next few days we'll have a map of zip codes of where cases are and every zip code has cases just so you know. So that will be out in the next couple of days. And then Monday, or Tuesday, we're going to be uh, spending a lot of time talking about this issue. Right. Well, thank you. And Gary, you need to introduce who our folks are, by the way, staff. Yeah. Mr. Chair, you have uh, Commissioner Humbertson had a question. Oh, Ken. Yes, um, Nancy, I hadn't had a chance to, to check today, but <clears throat> Do you have a link that's accessible to the general public if they have direct input to you on their ideas regarding uh, reopening? Not at this time, uh, but we're working on that website right now and I hope to have it up very quickly. Okay. As I shared with you earlier, there's a lot of the business community that's contacted me, um, particularly in the southern part of our, of our county that are very interested in, in, in providing uh, their advice, their suggestions, et cetera. Um, I'm happy to forward it to you, but um, ultimately a link on, on our webpage would be a good idea so yeah. they can have direct access to you and the doctor as far as the planning going forward. Yes, definitely. Thank you. 
Okay. All right. Ready? Well, Gary, what's up next? All right. So I, my, I just have a quick update, Commissioners. Earlier this week, you did agree to extend the temporary closure of most county buildings through Monday, May 18th. And of course, as we have been, we are still serving the public. We're doing that remotely through email, phone calls, or on the website. So uh, we continue to support the public, but we're doing that remotely for the health and safety of our employees and the public. So through May 18th, the county buildings will temporarily be closed until that date at the soonest. Uh, so with that, uh, we're ready to move on. And uh, that is back to you, Chair. Thanks. So uh, first I'll announce that the board will recess as the Board of County Commissioners and convene as the Housing Authority Board for the next item. With that, again, I'd like to introduce uh, Housing Authority Commissioner Ann Leinstra. Hi, Ann. Hello. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I guess it's a Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Yes. I'll, I'll ask the clerk to read the Housing Authority Consent Agenda by title. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Today's agenda, approval of resolution number 1945, Housing Authority Annual Plan 2020 through 2021, and approval of the closing documents with Northwest Housing Alternatives Inc. for the acquisition of Clayton Moore Commons. And that concludes the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Do any commissioners wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Second. Second. Thank you, Ann, and thank you, Martha, and whoever the other one was. Ken. Thank Ken. Yeah. Um, any other uh, further discussion? With that, I'll ask Kevin to please poll us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Leinstra. A. Commissioner Humbertson. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Chair Bernard? Well, aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you, Ann, and have a good evening. <laughs> uh, with that, I'll announce that the board will adjourn as the Housing Authority Board and reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners uh, for the remainder of the meeting. And what's up, Gary? Yes, next is a public hearing, a first reading of an ordinance amending Clackamas County Code Chapter 2.05.200, layoff and seniority of the personnel policies and procedures for Clackamas County employees and declaring an emergency. Andrew Neris from County Council will present. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, this is a change to the county code that's uh, designed to eliminate bumping rights for non-represented employees only in the event of a layoff. Uh, this matter was brought before the board during the issue session uh, in January 2000, uh, of January 14th of 2020 and was brought up again on April 21st of 2020. Uh, this change would eliminate the right of non-represented employees only to bump less senior employees in different classifications in the event of a layoff and making this change to the county code would bring us in line with other local jurisdictions, including the city of Vancouver, the city of Portland, Multnomah County, and Washington County. Um, it does not have any impact on uh, represented employees whose layoff process and, and bumping rights are controlled by their uh, collective bargaining agreement with the county. Uh, this is the first reading and we recommend that it, uh, I, can, Gary, can you help me out? We're recommending that it uh, do, do pass and vote yes. Um, <laughs> Very good. good enough, Andrew. That's good. All right. All right. Uh, do any commissioners have any clarifying questions? Not seeing anything. So uh, I'll open the public hearing and ask Dylan uh, if there anyone wants to speak on this matter. Thank you, Chair Bernard. I'm Dylan Blaylock with Public and Government Affairs, and I'll be coordinating both public comment for this specific public hearing and later on for general comment. If any attendees would like to provide a comment specific to this public hearing, amending the code for layoffs and seniority and the personnel policies and procedures, you can do so now by utilizing the raise hand feature on Zoom. Again, we'll open up public comment on any topic related to county business in a little while, but if you have a comment for this specific topic, uh, this specific public hearing, please hit raise hand on Zoom. 
and I don't see anybody on the phone. And seeing none, Chair. Okay. So, you can go ahead. so we'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion to read the ordinance by title only. Mr. Chairman, I move we read the ordinance by title only. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we read the ordinance by a title only. Um, or ask the, oh, well, I guess we need to pull the commission first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Humbertson. Aye. Chair Bernard. Aye. Hey, I have a dog too. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, it uh, passes unanimously and ask the clerk to assign the number and read the ordinance by title only. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is ordinance number 04-2020 and ordinance amending Clackamas County Code chapter 2.05.2000 layoff and seniority of the personnel policies and procedures for Clackamas County employees and declaring an emergency. Any further discussion? So uh, the commissioners have any proposed changes or amendments to the draft? No. no. So I'll announce that the second reading will be Thursday, May 14th, 2020 at the board's regular scheduled business meeting at 10 a.m. Oops. Second. All right, on, on to the uh, uh, consent agenda and ask the clerk to read the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On tonight's consent agenda under Health, Housing, and Human Services, approval of Housing and Community Developments 2020 Action Plan, approval of Amendment Number Two to Intergovernmental Subrecipient Agreement with the Friends of Estacada Community Center, approval of Amendment Number Two to the Intergovernmental Subrecipient Agreement with the City of Oregon City Pioneer Community Center, approval of Amendment Number Two to Intergovernmental Subrecipient Agreement with the City of Gladstone for the Gladstone Senior Center. Approval of amendment number two to intergovernmental subrecipient agreement with the Canby Adult Center. Uh, social services commissioners encourage public. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, approval of amendment agreement number 160440, amendment with the State of Oregon Department of Human Services, Aging and People with Disabilities Division. Under our finance department, approval of a contract. PBS Engineering and Environmental for Hazardous Material Testing Project, 27 county owned buildings. Under elected officials, approval of intergovernment agreement amendment number one between the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office and the state of Oregon acting by and through its Department of Transportation. Uh, request by the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office to approve amendment number three to the, its agreement with the Oregon State Marine Board. Under our Department of Human Resources, approval of contract amendment number one with Troop HR for equal pay analysis under disaster management approval of a subrecipient agreement with the city of Portland to purchase and reimbursement activities related to the use of fiscal year 2019 United States Department of Homeland Security's urban area security initiative grant program approval of intergovernmental subrecipient grant agreement number DM-20-001 with the Department of Forestry North Cascades District for fire prevention coordination under business and community services, approval of amendment number one, memorandum of understanding between business and community services, county parks and the Hoodland Women's Club to extend time to transfer properties to local park district upon its formation. Under technology services, approval of a purchase order for Artisan Networks hardware from SHI International Corporation. And finally, under water environment services, approval of amendment number one with Eating Northwest Inc. for the Sun Sprite sinkhole repair emergency work. And that concludes the consent agenda, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Do any commissioners want to remove or pull an item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Been moved and second that we approve the consent agenda. Any further discussion? Kevin, please pull the commission. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Savas. Aye. Commissioner Schrader. Aye. Commissioner Humbertson? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Chair Bernard? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Next up is citizen communication. I'll ask County Staffer Dylan Blaylock, uh, who will moderate this portion. Dylan, it's over to you. 
Great. Thank you, Chair Bernard. Now is the time for public comment on any topic related to county business. We do have some attendees. Uh, if any attendees would like to provide a general comment or pose a question related to county business, now is the time. Please go ahead and use the raise hand feature on Zoom. That's on the Zoom bar at the top or bottom, depending on your device. And I also have two questions or comments to relay um, over email from people who've emailed in. But first we go to the phones or the Zooms, as it were. Uh, let's see, I do not see anybody with hands raised, so I will go to our emails. The first is from, and again, once I get to the end of this, I will look up to see if any commissioner has their hand raised if, if we want to have a comment on it. The first is from Mark Schull of Sandy. On behalf of concerned citizens, I would like to ask about the upcoming budget. With the recent overspending and mismanagement of the budget, there is great concern about the status of the 2020 to 2021 county budget. We would like to see a budget overview presentation of the upcoming fiscal year budget before it is approved. With the effects of the COVID-19 work stoppage, the people are even more concerned about seeing fiscal conservancy and responsibility in budget matters. They are concerned about how every tax dollar will be spent and they are looking for transparency and accountability now. Can you present a briefing as soon as possible? So I'd be happy to address that. Uh, first off, where did the mismanagement of uh, the budget and overspending come from? That has not occurred and won't be occurring. Uh, we have not mismanaged or overspent our budget. And secondly, there is an opportunity for public to uh, watch our budget committee meetings, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, and there's probably a calendar on the web, correct? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So you are they're open and public to anyone, anytime. Uh, so uh, that's just a blatant <laughs> trying to make something up about mismanagement of the budget. So anyone else want to comment? Uh, Commissioner Savas. Okay. Well, I I uh, I don't I don't think I would necessarily characterize it like that, Jim. All due respect, um, um, I, I you know we have not we did not approve a sustainable budget last year, um, and the year prior um, we uh, according to our staff after the fact we did overspend that year, and that's how we've been trying to backfill ever since. So. I think there is some accuracy that the, not the uh, not the current budget, not the 20, 1920 budget, but the 18, 1819 budget, I believe, is the one where um, uh, we uh, we made commitments in which we didn't have the funds to do so. Well, okay, Paul. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Well, I'm, I'm just yeah, you asked. It's not true. That's a, a misperception of what happened. Anybody else? All right, what's the next question? Okay, uh, the next is from Les Poole of Gladstone. Les, welcome back. <laughs> Commissioners, I submitted this letter to the state regarding reopening Oregon and it applies to the county. As we begin a new month, much more is known and reopening most of Oregon must begin. Historically, we are entering a time of potential government overkill. Our shared health and future cannot afford that. I have a question that has eluded many. Do we have an up-to-date figure for the percentage of businesses and institutions that have remained open? At this juncture, the risk of spreading the virus is high. I support keeping the schools closed until after July 4th, after the start of the new fiscal year. It's not practical at this time to load children on school buses or expect those under 18 to have the discipline required to prevent transmission. I agree with plans to address the needs and timing of various regions in our diverse state. It's already dry in Harney County and much of Eastern Oregon. With the exception of a few cities, the population is sparse. Most importantly, we need their agriculture to thrive or we'll be contributing to the pending food shortage. The lack of activity is harming all of our health. With warmer weather coming, all viruses struggle to survive. I disagree with the decision to close state parks. All parks should be reopened for day use only, initially by reservation. The campgrounds can be used for daytime activities. The concept would favor Oregonians while discouraging overnight visitors from out of state. 
There is more I could write, but realize you are being inundated with ideas and demands. Get us moving carefully. Thank you, Les Poole. Thank you. Anybody else? No, and I still see no hands raised, Chair, so I believe that's it. All right, we'll move on to County Administrator updates. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to share some good news going on here at Clackamas County. First, uh, the Department of Transportation and Development has continued to do a great job keeping our land use and building permits moving along. That department has heard from a number of customers how important their continued service for permit applications is and the excellent customer service our staff provides. We received a note from a local business, Veriton uh, Architecture, and they wrote, thank you again for everything. Clackamas County building folks have been the absolute nicest team that I've ever met during the permit process. So thank you to our staff in transportation and development for their excellent professional friendly work. Uh, next, the Hamlet of Milano recently donated $500 of their own fundraised money to their local fire department for personal protective equipment or PPE and other support for COVID-19. So thank you to our fantastic community volunteers at the Hamlet of Milano who voluntarily chose to do that for their community. Uh, finally tonight, commissioners, I'd like to recognize Kevin Moss. Kevin is serving as clerk to the board and has worked at Clackamas County for seven years. And tonight and today is his last day at Clackamas County. Uh, Kevin has accepted a position as the clerk to the board at Washington County. And we are very excited for his opportunity, but we are gonna miss him a tremendous amount. So I have a little thing I'd like to read for Kevin. And then commissioners, uh, you have, thank you for preparing a certificate for Kevin. You may not have known that, but we did a certificate for you, <laughs> electronically signed by you that we're gonna present to Kevin here online. So first, Kevin began his career at Clackamas County in March, 2013 in the Department of Public and Government Affairs. The director of that department at that time, Gary Schmidt, that's me, saw the drive and motivation in Kevin and hired him as a temporary staff person responsible for a variety of duties in the Public and Government Affairs Office. When an administrative position opened in the Board of County Commissioner's Office, Kevin was encouraged to apply. He started in the Board of County Commissioner's Office in January 2015. During his time in the Board's Office, Kevin has excelled in everything he does. He took it upon himself to learn about county departments and operations to enhance his knowledge. He is kind, patient, and demonstrate the, demonstrates the county's core values every day. He is very well respected throughout Clackamas County and our region, and we certainly can see why Washington County lured him away. So Kevin, we will miss you very, very much, and know that you always have a home here at Clackamas County. So the certificate commissioners that you are presenting, Kevin, to honor his service to Clackamas County, and I think uh, Mary's gonna put it on the screen, uh, and Kevin has a, a paper copy as well. Uh, Clackamas County, there it is. Clackamas County wishes to recognize Kevin Moss for his outstanding dedication, commitment, and service to Clackamas County, the Board of County Commissioners, County Departments, and the citizens of Clackamas County. We wish to extend our sincere appreciation, signed this 30th day of April, 2020. So Kevin, congratulations. Thank you for all you've done for Clackamas County, our employees and the public. And I think each commissioner would like to say a few words to you. Who'd like to start? Commissioner Humberton. Oh, there's Ken over there, okay. <laughs> Kevin, I just wanted to say that as one of the newer commissioners on the board, when I first came in the door, that your smiling face was there. But more importantly, every time I had an issue, a question, a problem, or something that I went to you with and asked for your assistance, you were always there and always helpful. That will never be forgotten. I truly appreciate the support that you've given me as a county commissioner and that I believe you give to the other county commissioners. So, so I wish you the best of luck going forward in your new job. And um, I'm going to let Catherine Harrington uh, over there in Washington, Washington County know how displeased I am with them stealing you away. I already told her that. <laughs> uh, who's next? I'll jump in. Uh, you, Kevin, uh, I pretty much, uh, um, Commissioner Humberston kind of stole my thunder, but uh, I just want to just say that uh, uh, I too can uh, uh, verify that anytime I ever needed any help or assistance, 
um, you were there and you followed through to the T. Um, that uh, didn't go unnoticed and I totally appreciate that. I think in my, in my work um, dealing with customers, uh, we call it attention to detail and, and service and a commitment to service. And I think you, uh, you know, your service is emblematic of that. And um, people that don't just answer the question or serve or do or provide, but they make sure that this is what the, the recipient really wanted. You know? So you, you have follow through um, and I really appreciate your attention to detail, your commitment to Clackamas County um, your friendly greeting every every morning, every day, every evening, um, and uh, you've been a pleasure to work with. And I wish you well. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Schrader. Oh, Kevin, I'm really going to miss you. You're cheerful. You're fun. You're kind. <laughs> you're smart, and you have been a great asset to the county. And I was here in 2013 when you first came on board, and it's been really great to watch you grow professionally into this job. I mean, it has been been phenomenal. And I don't know what I'm going to do about the word of the week, because that was the thing you and I commiserated on every week. So, so I'll try and carry it on, it on without you. But I just want to let you know how much I respect you, how much fun you are, how diligent you've been. And you deserve all success in the future. And yes, I'm also going to tell Catherine, well, I wish she hadn't lured you away either, but but I think it's a good move for you. So so stay safe and healthy, my friend. And as Gary said, you're always going to be welcome back uh, to Clackamas County. Thanks, Sonia. Yeah, Kevin, you know that your smile has meant so much to me. Actually, when we did have an office that we were going to, uh, right before I would get to the door, I would anticipate seeing Kevin and I get really happy and go into the office. And when he wasn't there, I'd go, oh. So um, it is definitely going to be an adjustment when we, when we re-engage back in our county offices. But mo mostly, Kevin, I want to say that while you have been such a support and helpful person, you been a friend and someone that I must keep in my life. So we have to stay in touch. I have your personal cell phone and your personal email. So we are definitely going to do that. Because what I also really appreciated was our conversations, our discussing of issues. You help me with clarity on all perspectives. There's, you are so smart and you have so much depth. You really understand local government. You understand the different pressures, the different factions, and all that goes into what I could call a stew or a soup, a mix of much diversity. So you've really helped me grow as a commissioner in dealing with all the issues, and I value you immensely. So thank you for everything over these last three years that I've been a commissioner. Well, I had an opportunity to talk, you know, talk to Catherine and and uh, chew her out for stealing you. Uh, but I also know that uh, Deborah's thinking about offering you even a better job. So hold on to your hat. But Gary made one mistake. Page fifteen of their uh, employee handbook says. All Washington County employees must live in Washington County, so you don't have a home here. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, you, you are always great. Uh, always, whatever you ask for, you got it done. And I really appreciate that and wish you all the luck in the world. And we'll try to steal you back someday. And there's always a future commissioner position. Uh, will be opening up uh, maybe in about four years and you'll be about old enough to do that. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it very much. So Kevin, Kevin, would you like to say anything, Kevin? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Minister Schmidt. Commissioners, I mean, this has been an honor. I remember Chair Bernard, Commissioner Schrader, Commissioner Savez, when I came on board 2013, you were all here and you welcomed me with, with open arms and and Ms. Schrader Schmidt as the PGA director opened the door to hiring me here at the county and then uh, put in the good word for when the county administration job opened. And uh, I wouldn't be successful at this job if I didn't build a network and relationships with each and every one of our departments. 
So they're the true ones. And I mean, I wouldn't be successful or be moving on to this new opportunity without Mary Rathke. She was the one who is, who's trained me, has mentored me, who has been there every step of the way. And she truly is Clackamas County. And so I've just been so blessed that she gave me the opportunity to learn. And Commissioner Fisher and Commissioner Humbertson, when you came on board, I remember Commissioner Fisher sitting with you during the appointment process and you were the first interviewee. And, and we talked all things law, government, and I could just see the spark in your face of what you want to get in here done. So I think the commission did a good job choosing you. And Sheriff Humberton, we've had so many great talks, so many great discussions, <laughs> and just the one-on-one -on -one of what we've built for this county. This county will always be my home. This office will always have my heart. And I will just do my best to make sure you guys see me shine in everything I do. So I truly appreciate all of you and thank you for everything. Don't knock them dead. Yeah, and there's always mayor of Damascus. Who knows? I, I'm waiting <laughs> on the uh, Oregon Supreme Court to take up that case. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, uh, we're moving on to Commissioner Communications. And Martha, you're up first. Well, um, I have just never thought I would be in a position like the rest of us where we are really running an enterprise um, using Zoom. And um, you, I would almost like to think it was more restful kind of doing it at home, but no, not really. It's a little harder with barking dogs at your feet is what I'm finding out. <laughs> And, um, you know, it's been, I think the biggest thing I'm thinking about lately on a personal level is my grandchildren and the one in um, uh, little Devin in, in uh, Boston is doing very well. He's giggling. He's starting to sit up. He's doing everything he's supposed to do. Um, I FaceTime my daughter in Boston today and my daughter, daughter in England and knock on wood, everybody's healthy so far and everybody's safe. Um, my English grandchildren are, bringing, are building forts literally all over the house. And it's a little hard because I know that even though with FaceTime and the technology we have, it's highly likely I will not be seeing them physically for quite a while. And sometimes I worry that by the time they're teenagers, I won't get to see them till they're teenagers. And by then they're not so interested in their grandma anymore. <laughs> you know, they, they have their peer group. Oh, the My friend just walked in the door. So. Oh, right okay. So with that, I'll sign off. <laughs> that was great. Uh, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Bernard. Thank you, Martha, for making my heart stir with missing my grandchildren as well. It is such a challenge during this time. But I do want to focus on some of the more joyful moments. I had one of those uh, for a few hours last evening. I uh, had the opportunity to work as a volunteer for the campaign for the Here Together Metro Services ballot measure. And I'm going to, I um, got my husband involved and my son, Nathan, who flew back about a week and a, week and a half ago from Washington, DC to ride out this pandemic with us is uh, working very diligently as a volunteer for this campaign effort. And so I wanna put up, have Kevin put up the slides of my wonderful family that has um, been helping me. So my son, Nathan, because he flew on an airplane, I've made him wear a mask with, while he is in the house and we've been maintaining our social distancing but he was walking around making his phone calls, getting pretty excited. And my husband, Kirk, at his computer, it's amazing how we campaign these days. A name, a phone number um, pops up on your screen and you make the phone call. You have the script right there to address it. And every time there was something that was exciting, and I can tell you, it was mostly Nathan getting commitments to vote yes or getting commitments for a lawn sign. Uh, we would all cheer. We have three levels in my house and from 
that from the bottom level to the medium level to the higher level, we were just so happy to be doing this work. So Kevin, I'll have you do the next slide. And I just want to talk about why this homeless services measure is so important. So right now there are 5,200 people in the region. This measure is for the metro region in Washington, Clackamas, and Multnomah counties. And there are 21,000 children in our region who are homeless. Oregon is the state with the highest number of homeless children. And also in our region, 56,000 people, and this is pre-COVID, are one paycheck away, or one crisis away, or one car wreck away from homelessness. So I'll ask for the next slide. When you add that onto the fact that it takes two to 10 years to get um, subsidized housing in our region, it compounds the problem. The resources simply aren't there to help those most in need. So, okay, Kevin, you can take the slides away now. So what I want to talk about is the incredible epiphany that I had. I might have these at like three in the morning, um, usually, but it really struck me that we have been working for the last couple of years to craft this measure because homelessness was the number one issue facing our region. It's the number one issue on voters' minds. And it has been such an incredible focus of all of our work. And now we have COVID. And with COVID, it is so clear how devastating homelessness is. When I talk on the phone to our different service providers and learn that there are people out there unsheltered that have lice, that haven't had their hands washed for a week, that are struggling, that might get sick, that have trouble you know, getting to the hospital or sheltering. And, and our staff and our emergency operations center and Amy Jo, who's our paramedic, community paramedic, are working tirelessly to make sure that anybody that's presumed positive with COVID who's unsheltered has a motel room to stay in and is safe and sheltering. We've put up um, makeshift showers and, and restrooms for people. We've really focused because this population is a public health crisis in and of itself. And this population presents an emergency for all of us without COVID. So what I'm most pleased with as well is that before there was COVID, the crafting of this measure was designed so that those who are most able to pay are paying for it. 94% of businesses, small businesses are exempt from paying this tax. It is a 1% income net profits tax for businesses that have sales over $5 million. So those businesses that do well through this are the ones that will be paying for the tax. It will also tax high income earners for joint filers with incomes over $200,000. It will tax 1% of, of the dollars over $200,000. So it was designed for those that are able to help those that are most in need. And I am just so thankful. I am so thankful that we crafted this measure the way we did, never anticipating a pandemic, which has brought this so much to the forefront. We now have the opportunity. Ballots are coming. I think some people have had their ballots um, already. Now's the time to cast those votes to vote yes, because I can tell you, and I think the rest of my commissioners can attest, we talk to our federal delegation, we talk to our state leaders, the local level, we can't depend on the federal government or the state government to fix this crisis for us. We have got to come up with resources on our own. With the 
coming recession, which we're anticipating with less revenues overall for public services, we need to take action for this crisis, for our community, for all of us. And I don't wanna sound kind of schmaltzy here, but it's really true. We all are all here together, although we're isolated because we're social distancing. We are not alone. And now is the time that we can truly take care of each other. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Paul. Yeah, well, um, I uh, appreciate um, Commissioner Fisher's uh, passion towards this. Um, I've been um, focusing on this homeless crisis for uh, many years, um, uh, specifically on the aspects of what, what and why we have been falling year after year deeper and deeper into homelessness and try to get some of the root causes such as uh, policies um, uh, that uh, impact the affordability of housing, um, policies that um, contribute to people being displaced, gentrification, all those mm -hmm. issues. And um, it, it uh, is uh, very um, unsettling, um, the fact that we're in this predicament. And been watching Los Angeles County, Southern California, the Bay Area, and reading articles constantly all the time. Uh, this came up Wednesday evening, the measure came up Wednesday evening, no, Tuesday evening at the Jennings Lodge CPO, and there were some questions that were um, uh, put, put towards um, uh, Councillor uh, Christine Lewis from Metro. Um, I, you know, I wish we had more time to um, perfect, you know, some aspects of this. Um, my, you know, I, I would have preferred personally to see the state do this. So um, it would be done, done statewide and, and not leave half the county out of, of um, the ability to receive these dollars should it pass. Um, and, um, and hopefully be able to um, uh, have a little bit um, lower impact to people that are struggling. Uh, you're right, no one foresaw this COVID crisis when this was being crafted. And um, uh, it's always a reminder, not even like today, I know that uh, you know, my fellow commissioners have been participating in some of the food, uh, provision of food. Um, uh, I was at the um, Public Safety Center today, um, handing out food to lines of cars of people um, that were lining up to get some food boxes and bags and milk and uh, and uh, eggs and so forth. So it uh, it uh, really strikes strikes to the core, strikes to your heart that these people are 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 in trouble. Um, I was sharing with Commissioner Fisher via an email today um, a uh, question that was posed to me by. Uh, one of my neighbors on an early morning walk. And I think messaging is always really important. Um, uh, and to make sure we get it right, get the messaging right. And um, I, I'm hoping to have that conversation because the, the flyer, we talked about the language in the flyer about, um, you know, uh, the flyer I received in the mail that the, this lady I spoke to this morning who I bumped into was asking about ending our homeless crisis. I, I hope that's the case, but I, I don't know that we've got any, you know, study or data that would support that. And I think that that one paycheck or that one crisis or that one um, car bill or whatever has already occurred out of this COVID thing, right? People literally lost their jobs. Um, so it's, it's, um, uh, it's a concern um, and how we deal with this on, uh, on nationwide. I think the, pop, the population of homeless in Los Angeles County alone is 56,000 people and 32,000, I believe, uh, in the city of Los Angeles, not included in the 56 for a total of near 90,000 people in Los Angeles County. Um, and I think when they passed their H, their housing bond and their supportive services bond, they were hoping that they could get ahead of it. And they saw a migration of people from other local areas into Los Angeles County. Um, so I, I don't know how they're making grounds on that. I'm waiting for the point in time count to come out. They do theirs every year. It should be out any time now to see if uh, 
their homeless numbers are going down or up, but um, the jury's out on that. We'll see, we'll see the numbers here pretty soon. Um, the other thing that came up a little bit at the Oak Lodge CPO, um, or excuse me, the Jenny's Lodge CPO on Tuesday night, and then I saw an email today, I just wanna just quickly address. Um, you know, last year I held um, three town halls and a couple of them, you know, pretty well focusing on trying to incorporate or why we should incorporate or discuss, you know, the issues before the unincorporated areas of Clackamas County and specifically in the urban area. And um, uh, so we, we tried to get a lot of people to work together. I think that's the key thing. And we had a number of people that were excited about working together and um, uh, they were, uh, and I think un unfortunately, um, even though I tried, um, we had a group go off and we got an email from this group this morning. So and with, the, with the draft proposal to Metro, so I can't wait for our discussion on Tuesday. Um, but uh, um, Gary, I hope we have enough time for that discussion. I'm gonna try and call the people that um, wanted to be part of of this activity, but um, did not have that opportunity. I'll, I'll, I'll be talking, I'll be calling each of them and let them know what's going on. Um, but I just wanted to, I, I'll look forward to that conversation. Um, I also want to say um, a great thank you to all the frontline people, um, uh, the people that today that participated in uh, packing the bags and the boxes of food and my fellow commissioners who have done this recently as well. Um, the frontline workers that are um, growing the food and packaging the food and stocking the shelves and dr you know, driving the food everywhere. And so they're out there in that midst. We have our emergency responders that, you know, our fire, police, um, uh, uh, paramedics, um, uh, people like AMR and, um, uh, and others that are uh, transporting people. Uh, they're, they're in the midst of this as well. They're, they're seeing that. The nurses, the doctors that are there, I mean, um, I, they are heroes. I know that we, there's been quite the community outreach to acknowledge their work and acknowledge their, um, their, their commitment to the service um, that they're providing today. We all need to be thankful for that. I'm glad to see that our numbers are dropping. Um, I know that um, you know, a number of us have concerns about what the future looks like. Um, and we just hope that we can normalize soon and there's a cure, a vaccine or some treatment for this COVID virus as soon as possible. But um, I think people are gonna have to find a way, but it was just striking today, just going back to that food line and seeing these people drive up in their cars and knowing they're there because they didn't have, they didn't have the resources to buy food. Uh, that is, that's striking. Nothing strikes home more than that to see people struggling. Um, so, um, with that, um, um, everyone keep up the good work and we'll see you next week. <clears throat> okay, Ken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll try to be brief, um, <clears throat> but I did wanna to touch on the homelessness issue very briefly. Um, historically, if we take a look at uh, wages in America, uh, we have seen that as wages have declined overall for working people, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is the transfer of high wage jobs overseas, we've seen homelessness go up. I acknowledge that there are other contributing factors to homelessness besides that, but it's a, I believe, a critical component of why people can't afford housing. When a one bedroom apartment costs over $1,000 a month and you're working at a, a minimum wage job or even at a $15 an hour job, you can't afford a one bedroom apartment based on the um, recommendation of cost, housing costs from HUD. So that is a key component that is going to have to be addressed, and that's a national problem that will have to, to address that part of it. On other issues, um, I've been in contact with a number of people in the business community um, who are obviously concerned about the success of their businesses and their loss of business and are very anxious to reopen. I've also made it clear that we will be making those decisions to a large degree based on what the uh, uh, director of emergency operations and our physicians say in conjunction with uh, our cooperation with our uh, counties to the west and north of us and with the governor's rules and regulations. But I have provided an avenue for them to get their ideas to me, which I will also forward to the EOC uh, and to uh, 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 Mr. Schmidt. Um, 
And if you do get ideas from other parts of the business community, strongly advise that all of us make sure that we get those uh, to where they can be incorporated into the planning going forward for the phase one reopening. Secondly, I want to give a shout out to um, our Bre veterans breakfast group that's on the first Fridays every month uh, at um, uh, the River Shore restaurant. They have taken upon themselves to work out a, a program to provide hot meals to veterans that we that are sheltering in some of our uh, hotels and, and motels right now that were homeless. Um, so a real shout out to the to the uh, veterans that are stepping up and, and volunteering to help uh, their fellow vets in our community. And then uh, a report on the fair board situation will be my last item. I had a conference with the uh, chair of the fair board as well as with Laura Zentner. Um, the, the fair board has decided that the garden show will not occur this year for starters. They have not yet decided what they're gonna do with respect to the fair. Um, they're looking at options. And of course, as I reported last time we met, uh, they are looking at their budget from, from the most desperate situation and other steps in between. Um, they have also looked for some bright ideas to um, do something different. And one of them I thought was interesting is um, having um, drive-in movies at the fairgrounds. They have a vendor who can provide the screen and the sound systems go through the AM radio on your automobile and you're able to sit there, watch a movie uh, and yet still maintain social distance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and they can and uh, obviously make a few dollars uh, going forward. So they are still working uh, to keep the fair and event center uh, going um, and making adjustments as we go. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I am done. Thank you. Um... I had a uh, Zoom uh, event, this, uh, a number of them today, but uh, with the mayor, mayors and uh, city managers and myself, uh, there is uh, obviously a huge desire to open up the county. Um, but you know, what we've done so far has reduced the impact by 70%, according to models, that's huge. Uh, want that slope to go down uh, and maybe uh, uh, improve a little bit better. But we're, I've committed myself uh, to working with our folks and the governor to get businesses open as soon as possible safely. Uh, and we're going to have another meeting next week. So on uh, Tuesday, we're going to get a draft plan. Uh, from our folks, uh, Dr. Present and Nancy and other people who are working on this. And we'll talk about how to do that. They're going to look at it. Uh, some of them I were interested in working on their own plans. I got one today from Timberline Lodge that they're presenting to the governor because this is the season for Olympic uh uh, folks to go up there and uh, practice, I guess. Uh, but, and, you know, they've lost a ton of money. Timberline's really struggling. Of course, that's federal land, so it's not a decision that certain, the county makes. Um, but they do have to work with the county. Um, yeah, the budget for the state of Oregon could be two to three billion dollars short this year. And uh, that's... Uh, that's going to have an impact on us, I'm sure. Um, and uh, 21,000 homeless children is not acceptable. I can't believe that in this country, the wealthiest country in the world, that 21,000 I mean, children are homeless. Is it 21,000 or 2,100? 1,000. That's just unacceptable. So. I hope you'll uh, consider voting yes on the uh, on this measure, and um, you know, rural Clackamas County. Yes, we have homelessness, but while this money won't, uh, sir, you know, um, I think it opens up lots of opportunities outside the uh, metro region to address this issue with the housing measure that uh, voters supported. We have tons of opportunity around the county to uh, provide affordable housing 
for those who need it. And uh, while we've done a great job with vets, I think children and families should be our number one priority next. And um, I look forward to this, uh, uh, this uh, election being over. Uh, I think that uh, one, well, the, call, the one uh, message about uh, the budget being mismanaged, that person was Ken's opponent. Uh, and to characterize it as mismanagement is, is wrong. Uh, so with that, um, we will, uh, um, anything else to go to the order? Uh, just one comment, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I did catch an article today that showed that uh, Oregon is in the top 10 states that is capable of, um, at least for a relatively short, for a short period of time, weathering this financial downturn. We were number, we were number three of all of the states in the nation. And that's because of the reserves that uh, the state has maintained. So it, that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods financially by any stretch of the imagination, but it does mean that we have a little bit of a, of a financial breathing cushion in this state. Hopefully, hopefully we won't uh, use that all up. Yeah, uh, I, that's great, but I don't think it helps a small business as much. So. That it does not. So... We got to get them open when we can safely, but that, this is data driven. Yep. <laughs> All right. With that, thank you. Good night. Good night, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you.